6 p.m. West Pakistan time. This is Radio Pakistan. In our series of party political broadcasts, we now present Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, President of the All Pakistan Awami League. Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. My dear fellow citizen, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum. I must begin by offering my regard for those heroic martyrs who shed their blood and laid down their lives for the cause of the people. It is their sacrifices and that of countless thousands who have defied tyranny in movement of the movement leading up to last year's historic mass of sirs that has carried the people's struggle forward. Indeed, even the fact that I am able to speak to you over the national radio and television network will be counted as one of the initial gains of the people's struggle since up till, up till this time this privilege was monopolized by those in power. Our struggle must go on for the real goals lie ahead. Power has to be owned by the people. The exploitation of man by man and of region by region must be brought to an end. The powerful coteries which have ruled Pakistan for long 22 years will do everything possible to prevent transfer of power to the people. It is they who are actively conspiring to frustrate it, the holding of the general elections and even after elections they will continue to obstruct every effort to end exploitation. They have money, they have influence, they have the capacity to use force against the people. History, however, testifies that a determined people can successfully resist and overcome such forces of oppression. The most solemn place that our military can make to the people of Pakistan is that we shall stand by their side and indeed lead them in resisting the forces of oppression and exploitation. No people have secured freedom and justice unless, uh, unless they have been prepared to die for it. We therefore serve notice upon the force of reaction in our society that we along with the people of Pakistan will confront them and if democratic forces are obstructed we shall resist them by every means possible. Our Malik was born in adversity and has grown in adversity. Our great leader, the late Hussein Shahi Swarwardi, who, who came into, uh, we came into existence to defy the attempt of ruling party to form a one-party state. We thus began the struggle to establish democracy in Pakistan. This struggle continues till this day. Our party has faced onslaught after onslaught from the ruling group. Ruling group. Our leadership, our workers have spent the better part of their lives in jails. We have faced and overcome every form of repression. It is this that gives us the courage and confidence today to commit ourselves to the task of confronting the anti-democratic forces. To overcome the crisis that engulfs the nation, we must resolve those issues which are its cause. The first is the deprivation of political freedom. The second is the sense of economic injustice felt by the overwhelming multitude of those people. The third is the deep sense of injustice created by widening the economic disparity between the regions. It is this that un underlies the anguish and the anger of the Bengali people. The same sentiment is reflected among the downturned people of neglected areas of West Pakistan. Our manifesto sets out a comprehensive strategy for resolving these fundamental issues. A real living democracy must be established in which all the fundamental freedoms shall be constitutionally granted. Our manifesto outlines a framework for the healthy growth of political parties, trade unions, locals and government. We do place to restore complete freedom of the press and academic freedom 
and to eradicate corruption, which has grown like a cancer in our society. The present economic system, which has established an untolerable structure of injustice, must be radically altered. Today, barely two dozen families have acquired control over 60% of the national industrial assets, 80% of its banking assets, and 75% of its insurance assets. 82% of the total bank advances are concentrated in only 3% of total accounts. The tax structure in existence is of the most regressive in the world. Only 2% of GNP is being realized as direct taxes as against 6% in other developing countries. While oppressive time indirect taxes are imposed on such essential commodities as salt. Protected markets, tax holidays, huge subsidies in the form of bonus vouchers, credits and grants of foreign, foreign exchange, and the artificially low official rate have created a specially favored condition for the growth of monopolies and cartels. Despite nominal land reforms, feudal laws have retained princely states. They enjoy, they enjoy vast privileges and their prosperity increases while the lot of the poor peasants becomes more and more desperate in a bid for survival. That is the movement of people from villages to the cities. According to official estimates, on fifth of the total labor forces, or about 90 lakhs people are unemployed. This alarming figure continues to grow. The industrial workers are suffering the full impact of the sharp rise in the cost of living. The cost of living is increasing more rapidly than the increase in money wages. The impact of the un uh, unending rise is the cost of living is also acutely felt by school and college teachers, law fed officers, employees, particularly the fourth grade employees of government. To turn now to the appalling record of economic disparity, it is seen that during the last 20 years, out of the total revenue expenditure of the government, only about rupees 1500 crores, that is only one fifth of the total, was spent in Bengal, as against over 5000 crores in West Pakistan. Of the total development expenditure, during the same period, about rupees 3000 crores, that is only one third of the total while spent in Bengal as against about rupees 6,000 crores in West Pakistan. Over 20 years, West Pakistan has imported goods worth more than rupees 3,000 crores as against his own foreign exchange earnings of barely 1,300 crores. Imports into West Pakistan have been three times the value of the imports into Bengal. It was made possible for West Pakistan to import goods worth with 2,000 crore in exchange of its, its export earnings by allocating to it to its 500 crores of the foreign exchange earnings of Bengal and allowing it to which lies over 80 percent of all foreign aid. The record of the field of government services is just as deplorable. About 22 years, Bengalis account for barely 15 percent in central government services and less than 10% of the different services. The total economic impact of such in discrimination has been that of economy Bengal today is a state of imminent collapse. Near famine conditions are prevailing in the majority of the villages. Some 17 lakhs tons of rice has had to be imported only to save the people from starvation. While, Ill while inflation has been mounting, those who are worse hit are the poor people of Bengal. The price of essential commodities has been 50% to 100% higher in Bengal than in West Pakistan. The average price of coarse rice in Bengal is rupees 40 to 50 per month as against 20 to 25 per month in West Pakistan. And of wheat is rupees 30 to 35 per month in Bengal, as against 15 to 20 per month in West Pakistan. 
मास्टर ऑयल सेल्स इन बेंगाल एट रुपीज फाइव पर शेयर एज अगेंस्ट विच टू रुपीज फिफ्टी पाइस ऑफ शेयर इन वेस्ट पाकिस्तान द गोल्ड प्राइज इज रुपीज वन हंड्रेड थर्टी फाइव टू वन हंड्रेड फोर्टी फॉर टोल आइन कराची एज अगेंस्ट रुपीज वन हंड्रेड सिक्सटी टू वन हंड्रेड सिक्सटी फाइव पर टोल आइन ढाका इवन ए कस्टम्स बेरियर हैज बीन इम्पोज अगेंस्ट कैरिंग गोल्ड फ्रॉम वेस्ट पाकिस्तान टू बेंगाल दिस इन जस्टिस इज द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ मैनेजमेंट द इकोनॉमी फॉर ट्वेंटी टू ईयर्स बाई द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट द सेंट्रल such in injustices this is born out of the four five year plan the fourth plan allegation are a confession of the failure of the central government however powerful it might be to redress past injustices our milik six point program free them body in the 11 point program present a rational solution to this problem of the regional injustice with a central bureaucracy in which bengal is account for barely 15% and with the nature of our power structure being what it is to expect justice from the centralized system of economic management would be to expect the impossible attempts to secure larger allegation by political representatives of bengal and other underdeveloped areas would only aggravate regional tensions and threaten the viability of federal government the only feasible solution is the reordering of the constitutional structure by being by giving full regional autonomy to the federating units on the basis of our six point formula such autonomy in order to be effective must include the power of managing the economy this is why we insist upon federating units having control over monetary and fiscal policy and foreign exchange earnings and other powers to negotiate foreign aid and foreign trade and foreign aid by giving to the federating units full control over its economy destiny while uh, uh, entrusting the federal government responsibility of over foreign affairs and defense and subject to certain subgers currency we believe a just federal balance will be attained our federal scheme and business the abolition of all pakistan services and its replacement by federating services when which person shall be recruited on the basis of population for all parts of pakistan we also believe that maintenance of militia or a paramilitary forces by federating units will effectively contribute towards national security the federal this federal scheme by removing the source of doubts distrust and discrimination will ensure a strong pakistan this scheme will understandably be opposed by those in all region who would like to treat it another region as a colony or a market we believe however that this scheme will help the full support of the common man of bengal and west pakistan within this constitutional framework we believe it will be possible to bring about a social revolution through democratic process and to create a socialist economic order free from exploitation rapid economic growth is or is an imperative necessity in order to meet the needs of our growing population to achieve it enormous effort and sacrifices are required to our people our people can be expect to respond to our call for making a big collective effort only if we can assure them that the burden of sacrifices as well as the fruits of economic prosperity shall be equitably shared among all section of the people and all region of the country to ensure these certain radical changes must be made in the structure of our economy we believe it is imperative to place key areas of the economy including banking and insurance under public ownership through nationalization future development in this areas should take place in the national sec in the, in the public sector in in the new order workers should share in the equity capital and the management of the industrial enterprises the private sector also in its own sphere must make their full contribution to the economy monopolies and cartel must be totally eliminated the tax structure must be made truly progressive
on the consumption of luxuries. Extensive support and encouragement must be extended to a small scale and cotton industries. Such supports should include ensuring regular supply of raw materials, such as yarn, dye stuffs, to hand loom weavers at a reasonable prices. Marketing and carrying facilities must also be made available to them. A small scale industries must be developed through cooperatives and dispersed through the countryside, reaching into the depths of rural areas, so that desperately needed employment opportunities are extended to our rural masses. Judah suffered from criminal neglect. A discriminatory exchange rate, a parasitic middleman have denied to the jute growers a fair price. Nationalization of the jute trade and muscular emphasis on jute research aimed at improving quantity and yield per acre will enable just jute to make its rightful contribution to our economy. Cotton needs similar attention and therefore we believe that cotton trade should also be nationalized and measures adopted to improve quality and yield. Our major cash crops, tea, sugarcane, tobacco still suffer from appallingly low yields due to neglect of previous governments. In a resource poor country, every effort must be made to ensure a rapid increase in productivity. A fair and stable price to the growers should also be ensured. Indeed, our entire agricultural sector needs to be revolutionized. Jaigir Dari, Jamir Dari, Shardari systems in West Pakistan must be abolished. The entire land system has to undergo a radical reorientation in the interest of actual tillers of the land. Ceiling must be imposed on land holdings. Land above such ceilings and the government cost land must be redistributed to landless cultivators. Agriculture must be modernized. The obstacle presented by the fragmentation and subdivision of land holdings must be overcome. And immediate steps in the right direction would be to induce the tillers to group their holdings under multi-purpose cooperatives. Government could provide effective inducement for this purpose by funneling through such a cooperatives vital impulses of irrigation, embankment, drainage, deep tubers, power palms, fertilizers, improved seeds, agricultural implements and machinery, carriage and inst instruction in modern agriculture techniques. As a measure of immediate relief to our peasants, we are growing under the burden of land revenue. We should abolish land revenue in respect of holdings up to 25 biggest and right of all areas in respect of such holdings. Ultimately, we aim, we aim to abolish the present system of land revenue. These vital areas, which form part of infrastructure of economy, must be accorded the highest priority. The first is flood control. A comprehensive flood control program must be implemented on an emergency basis. Measures to prevent water logging and salinity in West Pakistan must also be implemented at an accelerated Pace. The next vital area is that of power. There must be massive expansion in power generation and distribution. An extensive rural distribution must be launched to take electricity to the villages so as to make it possible for a small scale industry to be established. We aim to attain our power generation capacity of 2500 megawatts in Bengal within five years. Every source of power must be harnessed to, mix, to, maximum, to maximize power generation capacity. The Rukpur nuclear power project and Jamal Gold coal project must be immediately implemented. Natural gas must also be fully utilized. The third vital area is that of transport and communication. The highest priority is accorded by us to the construction of a breeze over the river Jamuna to enable direct communication to and from North Bengal. Bridges, over, bridges should also be developed over different points on river in Das and Sin and the Punjab over the Buriganga, Shitalakha and Karnafuli. 
the development of ports, both sea ports and inland river ports, and also roads and railways, must be accorded the highest priority. No investment is as vital for the healthy development of our society than investment in education. It is an alarming fact the number of primary school in Bengal has declined since 1947. Only 80% of our population has attained literacy and the number of illiterates is increasing by over 1 million persons per year. Primary education is denied to more than half of the nation's children. Only 80% of our boys and 6% of our girls complete the first five years of elementary school. We believe that at least 4% of the gross national product should be committed to education. The salary of the college and the school teachers, and particularly school teachers, must be substantially increased. Illiteracy must be eradicated by adopting of extraordinary methods. A crash program must be launched to extend free compulsory primary education to all children within five years. Second education should be made readily accessible to all sections of our people, new universities, including medical and technical universities, must be rapidly established. Poverty should not be allowed to deprive meritorious boys and girls of the opportunity to pursue higher education. Immediate steps should be taken to ensure that Bengali and Urdu should replace English in all walks of life. But every effort should be made to encourage the development of regional languages. Turning to the problem of the cities, we find low-income groups living in subhuman condition. The so-called improvement trust have been busy developing luxurious residential areas for the wealthy, while the poor have been left to fend for themselves. Future urban development must concentrate on providing for the needs of the poor majority of the city dwellers. Low-cost urban housing must be accorded the highest priority. In the field of health, even a minimum measure of medical relief is denied to over 90% of our population. Immediate measures should be, should be undertaken to establish a rural medical center and every union and a hospital at every Thana headquarters. National service in the rural areas should be introduced for medical graduates and paramedical personnel must be trained in large numbers to stop the rural health centers. Industrial workers play as vital a role in the economy as in the people's struggle. Their basic rights to form trade unions, to bargain collectively, and to strike must be granted. A living wage and the basic amenities, such as housing, education, medical care for themselves, and their children must be assured. All labor laws which restrict the basic rights of workers must be repealed. They can be expected to make their full contribution towards increasing industrial productivity. Productivity in all sections of the economy must be increased to make to the maximum extent possible if we are to meet the needs of our society. The way the structure throughout the economy must be altered. In keeping with the dictates of justice, price stabilization measures must be adopted to protect the real wealth of the workers and low paid employees against spurring inflation. We firmly believe in the quality of all citizens. The members of the minority community should know that we have always stood against every form of communalism. They shall enjoy equal rights with all other citizens and shall enjoy equal protection of the laws. Every effort must be made to develop our tribal areas so that these areas can be fully integrated with other areas and the tribal people are able to enjoy equal opportunities with other citizens in all walks of life. Our brothers in the Chittagong Hill Tracks, in the offshore islands and the coastal areas require special assist assistance to develop their Latin resources in order to enable them to play the rightful part in our national life. Mohazis should be integrated into a national life so that they may become assimilated with the local people 
and thus enjoy equal rights and opportunity to with them in all works of life. I must repudiate once and for all the false propaganda that Islam is in danger by six-point formula or of an economic program. Nothing which promotes justice between region and region and a man and a man can be opposed to Islam. We have affirmed our commitment to the constitutional principle that no law should be enacted or imposed in Pakistan which is repugnant to the injunction of Islam as contained in the Holy Quran and Sunnah. To turn to the important area of foreign policy, we believe it is imperative for us to avoid involvement in global power conflicts. We must therefore pursue truly independent, non-aligned foreign policy. We are committed to the immediate withdrawal from Seattle, Sento, on all other military pacts and to avoid any such involvement in the future. We support the struggle of our of the oppressed people of the world against imperialism, colonialism and apartheid in keeping with the principle friendship for all and malice towards none. We believe in peaceful coexistence with all states, in particular our neighbors. We believe that normalization of our relations with our neighbors would be the best advantage of our people. We therefore attach the highest importance to the settlement of our outstanding disputes. We have emphasized the importance of a just settlement of the Kashmir dispute in accordance with the United Nations relations. The threat of grave and permanent damage of the economy of Bengal posed by the completion of the Farah Kabras must be immediately met. Every effort must be made for the just solution of this problem without further delay. But this program and policies can only be implemented if power is owned by the people. Election will serve as a referendum on the basis of national issues, particularly that of autonomy on the basis of six-point formula. The elected representatives of the people alone can give to this country a constitution which will be durable basis for living together. It is for this, for this reason that we have repeatedly pointed out the restrictions sought to be imposed on the constitution-making powers of the elected representatives of the people are not legitimate. We would once again ask upon the President to repeal the restrictive provisions of the legal framework order. It also helped to create conditions congenial for restoration of democracy if all pending, pending cases, orange against the political workers, his students and laborers, arise out of the political activities and of the last year's mass of serves, are withdrawn. All sentences imposed in such cases are coveted. All political prisoners detained without trial should also be released. It is imperative for the security of the nation that armed forces should not have to carry the burden of civil administration or to have to involve itself in politics. These highly trained professionals should be left free to devote themselves exclusively to the vital task of defending the nation's frontiers. I would like to end by saying that as a nation we must prove equal to the challenge that faces us. A real living democracy must be established. The different people who make up Pakistan can only live together with a democratic framework. Any attempt to destroy democracy would in the process destroy Pakistan. Justice between region and region must be ensured by granting full regional autonomy to the federating units on the basis of our six-point formula. Within such a federal democratic framework, radical economic programs must be implemented to bring about a social revolution. The Army League has resolved to face this great challenge. We believe that with the support and confidence of the people which our party enjoys, we shall, inshallah, be able to successfully to meet this challenge. Pakistan, Jindabad.